It's on me, it's 8.30 and we're live from my front room! Welcome to Eurovision and me, starring me! We're live from my front room. I'm dressed as me. I don't know what you're dressed as because we're going to dress as Euro contestants or Euro fans or whatever. And I had a wardrobe malfunction. Tonight I was going to come as Cliff Richard. Got the Freddie shirt. I've had it for years. But it's one of them weird things that happens. If you keep a shirt, and the boys will know this, if you keep a shirt in your wardrobe for too long, say years, it shrinks. <laughs> and that's what happened to me. Welcome to my show. I've decided to call this Eurovision and Me. Because um, it'll be my view of Eurovision songs, because as I was growing up, it really influenced me. But I'm a lot older than some of you watching this, so some of these songs you might not have heard before. So this might be quite interesting for you, because I grew up, right? in the 1960s and 70s, which means half of my growing up years were in black and white. Imagine that. So you'll probably learn stuff about me tonight that you never knew before, maybe that you never wanted to hear. For example, when I was just a little boy, um, I asked my mother, what will I be? Will I be handsome? Will I be rich? Here's what she said to me. No. Quite tough. Quite a tough growing up. In the 70s though, it's a bit more colourful. Black and white, you're gone in the 70s. But tragedy struck because I had a friend um, called Johan and he was a bit older than me. He was a hippie. From an hippie. He had the long hair and the flowers in his hair. From an hippie. And I lost him. He drowned just off the coast at Exmouth. Johan is a hippie. And the lifeguard said he couldn't save him because he was too far out. <laughs> too far out. Boom! Straight in. And um, so when I was, when I was ickle, there was a tragedy in our family. I just looked at the script then. <laughs> do you see? When I do this, it means I'm looking for the gag. Boom! <laughs> They're all written down there. I'll show you at some point. But yeah, there was a tragedy. In our um, friends are joining me, by the way. <laughs> there was tragedy um, in the seventies outside our house because we lived in Mum and Dad's house on a hill, and the roads are not that wide or nothing. And um, so, growing up, I used to play football with my mates, the Hitchcocks and uh, Clive Gray and all that lot, and Kim Spooner. <laughs> These names mean nothing to you, but it's my history. And we played in the road, and then. One day there was a screech and this car comes swerving down the hill and I dived up the way into the flipping bushes and my mum was watching. She said, oh my God, Andrew, and she said, she grabbed me, I was all right. And the policeman was obviously chasing him. He was right behind him, pulled him over and he said, ah, wind your window down, mate. He said, you nearly killed that young lad. He, know, he might go on to do fabulous shows on a Sunday night on the internet. What are you up to? Can you tell I'm making this up? He said, uh, this is pretty serious. I'm going to need you to blow into this bag. And the bloke said, I can't do that. He said, what do you mean you can't do that? I'm a policeman. I need you to blow. He said, I can't do that. I'm an asthmatic. He said, what? He said, well, if I blow into that, I might have a fit or something and just pass that on. You'd have to get an ambulance. You'd have to write it up. He said, all right. I don't know what to do. Sir. He said, um, right, so you come down to the station with me and I give you a blood test. He said, you can't do that. He said, why not? He said, I'm a hemophilia. If you sort of draw blood from me, it'll go everywhere because my blood don't clot or nothing. And I'll pass it on your floor and you'll have to write it up. It'll be on your, all right, flipping neck. He said, right, we'll go old school then. Mm -hmm. I want you to get out of the car and I want you to walk down the white line in the middle of the road. He said, I can't do that. He said, for God's sake, why not? He said, I, I'm too drunk. Yeah. Right, let's go. 
boom, one, two, three, boom. Let's go to our first Eurovision song. And most of these songs are great memories for me, but I have to confess that this first, I haven't done this yet. Cheers, my lovelies. I can't wait to see what you look like. At the end of the show, I'll put a post on and you can put your pictures on. I think some of you might have dressed up tonight. Oh, I hope so. Right, first song. 1959. So, I, obviously, I don't remember this because I was two years old. Two years old at the time and I had too much going on for your vision, to be honest. I was concentrating on potty training and that, which I excel at. Can I just say, I've got the certificate. It's in my office. I'll show you sometime. I did very well. But 1959, right? Uh, the Americans were ruling the world with rock and roll. You had Lil Richard, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, Bill Haley in the comments, Elvis was just coming through, right? And at 1959, so UK said, we can rock as well as you guys. We'll show you in Eurovision. So this is it. Here's the song that, um, that's good. Here's the song that the UK entered into the Eurovision Song Contest. Are you ready to rock and roll? Are you ready? Let's rock and roll, 1959. There's a bird on a branch. There's a branch on a tree. There's a tree in the world. I know where I love to be. Meet the bird on the branch. Meet the branch on a tree. Meet the tree in the world. That's what we entered in the Eurovision Song Contest. And I don't remember at the time, but here's the story of why I know about it. Because I, when, when I was a teenager, I loved Monty, oh, that was Pearl Carr and Teddy Johnson, by the way. 1959, sing Little Birdie. And the way I found out about that song, because I was two, as I say, potty training, blah, blah. When I was a teenager, I used to watch Monty Python's Flying Circus. I freaking love that. They used to do great sketches. They did a sketch, like, of the game show. And the people taking part were the leaders of communism through history. Karl Marx, uh, Lenin, Che Guevara, Mao Zedong. <laughs> it was really fun. They were so clever, Python. And I think Eric Idle was the uh, compare the quiz master, and he said, "Okay, we're through the final round, Karl Marx, for the lounge suite." <laughs> Your question is: In 1959, Pearl Carr and Teddy Johnson took part in the UK's um, a version of the Eurovision Song Contest. They were the representatives of the UK. What song did they sing? <laughs> It's a great idea. And Karl Marx said, uh, was it the workers' uh, reaction to imperialism? He said, no, no. Um, the bourgeoisie? No, no, it's not that. Um, oh, <laughs> I just love this idea. And there's something buzz. Uh, Mao Zedong buzzed in. <laughs> Mao Zedong said, sing that little birdie. <laughs> and this, this made me a howl. I, I never heard of this song before, but I checked it out after that. So that's how I got to sing Real Birdie. Uh, 1959, I was two years old. I did well on the potty training, very proud of that. And years later, because, because I was so proud, I wrote this poem. I'm going to do it now. I don't have to, but I can if I want. A toilet seat is a toilet seat, whether it's up or down. Whether it's dry or soggy, oddly shaped or simply round. A toilet seat is a toilet seat, but this really is the riddle. Would it be so popular without the hole in the middle? <laughs> Thanks, I wrote that. Yeah, so 59, I was two. And then I started before my next big... Um, Eurovision song, I just sort of started off at school, 1961, 62 or something. I went to Whipton Barton Infant School in Exeter, and uh, this is where I found out I was going to do this, because I used to play with my mates in the uh, playground, 
And if it started raining, like, you know, Peter Kay sketch, it's spitting, it's spitting. The dinner ladies would take us all into the school hall. And, this is at four or five, they'd put me, me on the stage and I'd entertain all the other kids at the age four or five. I don't know where it came from, but obviously I'd like to be up there at that age. And I used to entertain the other kids. So that was my forte. I won brilliant academ uh, academically. What's the right word? Anyway, I'm going to say this very carefully because I know my sisters might be watching tonight. But I did end up in um, grammar school. I have no idea why. Because I wasn't that clever. But when I was at the infant school, we used to have a maths teacher. She's flipping strict. Not only strict, but not strict on herself. And we had to learn times tables by rote. You know, you had to memorize them and then repeat them and my dad was always good at figures so I always felt I was going to let him down because my dad was like the equivalent of a calculator before a calculator brilliant still brilliant with figures now he's 88 so yeah I was learning me times tables and I thought don't pick on me don't pick on me right children we're gonna it's a Friday morning we're gonna do our times tables oh my god don't pick me don't pick me Andrew Walkford oh my god me I want you to do your two times table. Now, I had a chance of that. That one was quite easy. And I stood up. I said, once two is two. Two twos are four. Three twos are six. Four season, you've obviously learned it. Well done, Andrew. Sit down. Oh, yes. Nailed it. Then, <laughs> she said, Mary. Mary used to sit next to me. She was gorgeous. I knew she was gorgeous. And, uh, he said, do her a three times table. So Mary stood up and said, one, three, three, two, three, six. Glad I didn't get this one. Three, three, six. No, man. I said, well done. Brilliant. And then she said, Johnny. Now, you know my mate Johnny, but he was quite rebellious when he was young. What the teacher you flipping hate him? He said, John, Johnny. When you stand up and do your four times table, Rebel, you stood up and went, Do I have to miss? She said, Yes. D, 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 She said, What the hell are you doing? He said, Well, I know the tune, but I just forgot the word. <laughs> so that was um, that was school for me, just checking the list. I want to take off them guys. So 1967, right, 1967, we won, yes, and it was great because the year before, we won the World Cup, I was nine years old in 1966, we won the World Cup, I remember it as if it was yesterday, because when Haller scored for Germany, I went, actually went behind the sofa and cried, but we won in the end, so that's brilliant, so we were obviously the best country in the world, and it would only be confirmed by us winning the Eurovision the next year. And we had a brilliant chance because we had Sandy Shaw, who was awesome. Sandy, I flipping love Sandy Shaw. And yeah, it was very hooky and quirky. And this influenced a lot of the Eurovision songs that came after, but I love her. And this probably had the best finish in the history of the Eurovision Song Contest. It's a great ending to it. So this was, this was it, oh, it's not too loud. She did so well there, she, she made a lot of money, Sandy Shaw, after that. So much money that she actually bought a pair of shoes. There will be certain people from a certain age group laughing at that, and other people thinking, that's not even funny. Right, better explain for the younger people watching this. Sandy Shaw was a singer in the 1960s with Dusty Springfield and all that. And she never wore any shoes. That was the thing, apart from the fact that she was lovely and had a great voice. Uh, she never wore any shoes and she did all her shows with no shoes on her feet and she never cancelled a gig. Even if she had a veruca, 
She wouldn't stop singing for a Veruca, but they wouldn't let her in the swimming pool. So that is quite sad. 1967, and I was 10 years old, and we won the Eurovision, so we were obviously the greatest country in the world, and that was just going to keep going because 1968, I wish I had the fruity shirt, huh? 1968, Sir Cliff had to win with the greatest song in the history of Eurovision. So I thought, congratulations, in 1968, so I thought we were going to smash it. Here it is, good ending as well. I think they realised how great the ending was with Puppet on the string, but they did something similar. So here we go. Congratulations and celebrations when I tell everyone that you're in love with me. Yes, we had to win, Cliff. That is six there. We had to win. Ah, second, second, second. Oh my God! By one point, and we lost to Spain. Singer called Martial. And uh, to be fair, though. If you're going to lose to someone, you may as well lose to someone. Now, this song was absolutely brilliant. And all of you, although at the moment I'm talking about it, you haven't got a clue what I'm on about. You'll know the words. You will know every word of this chorus. That's how brilliant this song was. So this beat, Cliff, by one point. You'll know the words. Here we go. 1968. This is the winner. Isn't it the words? Beautiful. Flipping guide, one point, and we lost to la 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 what la la. Anyway, it was a good time for me. I was uh, 10, 11. In those days, right, for the youngsters watching, we didn't have all the all your lovely programs on telly for kids and stuff. I mean, my wife's a lot younger than me. Yeah, I've done all right. She's a lot younger than me, and she had programs like Biker Grove and all that sort of stuff. When I was growing up, we had Watch With Mother or the Five O'Clock Club. We didn't have any dramas. If we wanted dramas for kids, we had to go to Saturday Morning Pictures. We used to go to the Odeon in Sidwell Street, Exeter, with my friends at six minutes to get in. Um, a couple of pence, I think, for the, the bus or whatever. When we got there, Mum and Dad would give us enough money to get a couple of penny chews. You can still get penny juice. I bought four the other day, um, £2.50. And, <laughs> and it was lovely. We used to have adventures like the Black Hand Gang, the Mark of Zorro. <laughs> yeah, I know that's still going now, Catherine Z or what's her face. <laughs> but we started it. And in that we used to have uh, adventures like cowboy stories. What's the time? I was like, oh, no, you're joking me. Couple of stories which I flipping loved. And I never forget this one called the Indian Tom Toms. Right, two cowboys got separated from the rest of the cowboys going through the prairie. And um, I didn't know what a prairie was. Uh, recently, people explained to me it's like Exmoor or if you're from Bristol, Bedminster Dam, that sort of thing. Two cowboys, Wyatt and Jesse, I was going to call them Malcolm and Edward, but I don't think it would have worked, going through the prairie. And Wyatt says, I thought I just saw an Indian headdress. And Jesse said, you're joking. And yeah, they don't sound very American, do they? <laughs> it don't really matter. He said, I think I saw an Indian. And Jesse said, if the Indians run, they're going to kill us. He said, no, I don't, I don't think I saw one. And then suddenly about 2,000 Indians just come up over the horizon. And Wyatt said, I think it is Indians. And Jesse said, that's it. And Wyatt said, calm down, lover. <laughs> Cowboys talk like this. They might not have seen us yet. They might not have seen us. Let's hide behind the rock. And Jesse said, if they've seen us, we're dead. 
you know, we'll know if they've seen us because they'll start the Indian tom toms. Just hope they don't. He said, I think we're all right. I don't think they've seen us. And Jesse said, Well, I hope not because you'll hear the Indian. Boom, 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 boom. Start up. Boom, boom, boom. He said, It's Indian tom toms. Boom, 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 boom. They've seen us for a good time. Why? Well, I said, Calm down. They just might be able to dance. We said, We're going to die. We're going to die. He said, Calm down. And then Jesse's getting really good. He said, we're going to die. I hate them drums. I hate the drums. I hate them drums. And silent. Then you just heard an Indian chief's voice saying, I'm sorry, it's not our normal drummer. <laughs> Boom. Let's do it together after three. One, two, three. <laughs> That was flipping Lulu, I loved her. And then the next one, 1973, I'm having to push this through now. Oh, I said to Shao today, I've got it down to 31 minutes. She said, you will get nowhere near that. We talk too much, I talk to myself. So I'll, I'll wind it on. And maybe I can catch up with some of the stuff I was gonna do on another week. Oh, it's a shame, 1973. This is a song I loved, because it won all sort of puppet on the string. Jack in the box and all that lot. Or Mary Hopkins. I know I was young, but that did sound like a euphemism. Boomy. So 1976. Is on the one? Yeah. No, 1973. Cliff Richard Power to all our friends. I haven't got time to do it. Then 1976, we won. I mean, we went back to the, um, you know, not not Jack in the box type thing. Brotherhood of Man, do you remember Brotherhood of Man? And we went with this. Say, I can't do this. Say, I can't do this. Say, I can't do this. Top of the bell. I was booked there to play guitar, sing a few songs, do a few jokes. Thousands of people in the bingo hall. Oh my god, scared me to death. And in between the bingo, the bingo caller was still shouting out numbers, and everyone was laughing. I, I said, What's going on? He said, Well, we've had every comedian that's ever been in the clubs, so we know all the jokes, we've numbered them. So at the same time, I just say the number, and everyone laughs. I thought, I'm dead here. So I came out on stage and I went, Hello, everyone. 24. Silence. Nothing. I did 52. Nothing. And I whispered to the bingo caller, I said, are these numbers anything to do with jokes? He said, yeah, they're the right numbers for jokes. I said, no one's laughing. He said, you're not telling them properly. I went off to the sound of my old fate. Silence. And as I was going off, the bingo quarter says, 123, the place is in uproar. People crying, screaming laughter, ladies wetting themselves. I said, why are they laughing so much? He said, well, they, they've never heard that one before. So, <laughs> get me towards the end. Oh, no, a few minutes to go. So this is quite important. This is what I want to finish on. Um, I had a chance of being in the Eurovision Song Contest. The Eurovision Song Contest had thousands of entries and it went down, they took it down to about 100, then to 50. And then it was the final 12. And out of those final 12, eight went on to the television. I reached the final 12. I reached the final 12, but I didn't get to the Eurovision. It could have been me that you were supporting, look at the time. I'm gonna do what would have been my entrant for the Eurovision Song Contest. Are you ready? This could have been me. Let's do it. Oh, 
kids would laugh Cause they could never be above you I brought you candy every day And what do you say? I've got no candy today But I've got the sun of a If you think the world And the time's about to go When you work it all out It's me and you Could have been me, <laughs> but 1980, for me, 1981 was the year. I'm rushing this room because I want to get to it before you go and watch the next program on telly. But to be honest, you can watch this on catch up. So I'm going to chill out. Right. 1981, that was the year. How old was I? I don't know, 24. Something like that. Bucks Fizz. Oh my God. We watched it again last night, me and Sean. We were so confident because we said on the tummy it was good every time, but what if it went wrong in Eurovision? And we didn't, we had to win because Johnny Logan had won the year before and Ireland seemed to win it all the fucking time. What's another year? Really, eh, man? We get your point. But Buck's Fizz, it was all about Buck's Fizz. I just realised I've done a whole show on Eurovision and I haven't referred to ABBA at all. That's a terrible thing. Okay, let's hear a bit of ABBA. <laughs> so, Buck's Fizz. <laughs> we saw him last night on the telly and all the primary colours. Lovely Cheryl Becker was in red. There were Mike Nolan, blue or green, and Bobby G in green or blue. And uh, the last girl was in... Jay was her face in yellow and they looked fabulous and uh, we thought they could do it and we believed in them. So for my end of the show, show tonight, I'm going to take you to our rights because we all went round, mum and dad's, my sisters there, all the family, to support Box Fizz. We were so nervous, we had to win, we had to get that trophy back. So I'm going to hand over now to Terry Wogan and I'm going to take you to our front room as we watched it. Good luck, Bucks Fizz. <laughs> well, Terry. Oops, always do here in Dublin. Conductor is John Coleman, looking calm and rested, yet popular. You have a mind of making your mind up for Bucks Fizz. Here we go. It's starting to let down. Cheers to Bucks Fizz.
Christus. Yes, that's, that's gone very big in the Simmons Court extension as well. Flippin' one.